the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcome. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for linear algebra students who are going through orthogonality and least squares topics right now. And you should have already gone through the inner product, the length of a vector, and orthogonal vectors. You should have gone through a topic called orthogonal sets and how to build orthogonal bases and orthonormal bases. A very important topic that you should have already gone through is orthogonal projections. And finally, the Gram-Schmidt process. All of that leads us to this final topic in orthogonality and least squares, and it's titled least squares problems. We're gonna cover least squares problems starting in this video and for maybe about, uh, let's say four more videos on top of it, plus another couple videos on applications of least squares problems. This is usually saved for the end of an introductory linear algebra course. So let's go ahead and talk about the concept of least squares problems. And you could probably just have read this already, but I'll read it out loud. As we know, many systems are inconsistent. Well, what if an application involves the need to solve such an inconsistent system? Like, how do you go about doing that? And our best bet is really to get a value of X or possibly multiple values of X such that AX will best approximate the vector B. That is, we wanna minimize the distance between the vector AX and the vector B. Now this deserves a visual, so I'm going to quickly jot down a visual. Now what you see right here is a plane, and I'm just using R cubed here to help us visualize this. Of course, this expands to any dimension, but let's just go ahead and pretend as though we have this plane which is isomorphic to R squared in the space R cubed. And we're really interested in talking about this vector I will call the vector B. Now that vector B is actually not in that plane. However, somebody's come in the room and they've said, well, you know what I need? I need a solution to AX equals B. But here's the condition. For X to be a solution to this equation, it would imply that B is in the column space of A. That is, B must be a linear combination of the columns of A. But what if the columns of A span a space that doesn't include B itself? So let's pretend as though this red plane represents the column space of A. That is, no matter what vector you multiply A against, it will never achieve that vector B because that vector B lies outside of the column space of A. For simplicity's sake, let's pretend as though A just has two columns, and therefore the column space of A is the span of those two column vectors. Also, let's just pretend, again for simplicity's sake, that those two columns are linearly independent. So therefore, the span of those two column vectors, which are possibly represented by these two vectors right here, well, that span is this red space right here. And no matter what we try, we cannot get a linear combination of those two vectors to ever become that green vector B. And again, I've mentioned it in previous videos, but when I say we cannot allow those two vectors or get any linear combination of those two vectors to become that green vector B, we really mean there's no way to take a linear combination of those two black vectors to arrive at the tip of this vector B. So what do we do in that situation? How are we gonna solve this equation when B is not even in the column space of A? Well, we're not going to solve it, to be very honest with you but we sure can try our best to approximate a solution to that. And to start that approximation process, what we'll want to do is to find out what's the closest point on this red space or this red subspace, if you will, that is closest to the tip of the vector B. And again, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I'm just drawing in three dimensions here, but you can see that the closest point on that red plane to the tip of the vector B is going to be 
the tip of that shadow vector right there. That's actually, from our previous work, the projection of B onto the subspace spanned by those two vectors, A1, A2. And that's how I tend to write it right there. It's just the shadow of the vector B onto the subspace spanned by the vectors A1 through A2. Notice I'm using a capital A there because subspaces we use capital letters for, no big deal. A lot of textbooks will also use the notation W. So they'll say, oh, that's a projection of that vector B onto a subspace W, which is spanned by these vectors A sub one and A sub two. So the tip of that gray vector is actually the closest point in that subspace to the tip of the vector B. Now, if I try to solve AX equals the projection of B onto that subspace W, which is spanned by the vectors A sub one and A sub two, or basically spanned by the columns of A, or in other words, the vector that is the projection of B onto the column space of A. If I wanna solve that equation, AX equals that vector, I need to be very clear with you and let you know that value of X that we get from solving that matrix equation is not a solution to this. It's just the best approximate solution to this because there technically is no solution to this. Again, B is not in the column space of A, so there's no solution here. But we can target a value of X that's close, close enough for government work, as we would say, to this vector B. And to do that, we just need to solve AX equals the projection of B onto the column space of A. And that leads naturally to this definition because the process that we just talked about is called the least squares solution process. And the solution itself that we're using to approximate what would be, well, the non-existent real solution is called the least square solution. So if A is a rectangular matrix, it could be square, but let's just pretend as though it's rectangular. The only reason, by the way, in definitions that we say, if A is M, by n is so that we can talk about the dimensions of the column space of A or the null space of A, that type of thing. So if A is an m by n matrix and B is a vector in Rn, a least squares solution to Ax equals B is a vector that we're going to use the notation x hat for. That's what x hat is right there. And that solution is also a vector in Rn such that the distance between the vector A times X and the vector B, and remember, the vector B is not in the column space of A, so this there will be some error here. A times any vector will never equal B, but we might be able to minimize the size of that resultant vector. So if we can find that vector X hat that minimizes that distance, it should be the case that that distance is less than or equal to the distance between AX and B for any other X that we could ever invent. That would be the minimized distance. And there you go, I just wrote that there. X hat is the vector that minimizes the distance between AX and the vector B. That would be called the least squares solution. It's called the least square solution, by the way, because this is highly related to the Pythagorean theorem. So you're actually adding up a bunch of squares here. It's a sum of squares is what happens when you find the distance between two vectors in space. Remember the norm of a vector, that's all this is, is a square root of the sum of the squares of its entries. That's why we call this a least squares approximation or a least squares solution. Now to reinforce the concept, if there's not a solution to the matrix equation AX equals B, then, well, B should not be in the column space of A. Again, that's from the visual I drew just a few moments ago. So thinking back or recalling all the work we've recently done in linear algebra, the point in the column space of A that's closest to B is actually the projection of B onto the column space of A. And I know that it sounds like I'm constantly repeating myself here, but it is important. It's such an odd concept for people when you're first going through linear algebra to talk about 
this projection of a vector onto a subspace and the fact that the vector B here is not in the column space of your matrix A and how do you get close to that vector B, but this visual is actually pretty darn helpful. Another thing that is going to be helpful in the long run is to remember that this vector in blue, which I didn't actually draw as a vector, but if I did, it would look something like this. That vector in blue is the projection of B onto the column space of A per. That is, it's a projection of B onto a subspace that's perpendicular to the column space of A. And we have already worked with this enough to know that that vector is actually going to be the vector B minus the projection of that vector B onto the column space of A. And that's only because the vector B itself is the sum of this gray vector and the blue vector. So if you talk about it in colors, the green vector is the sum of the gray and the blue vectors. So therefore the blue vector itself must be the green vector minus the gray vector. And that's exactly what we're saying here in blue ink. It's the green vector B minus the gray vector, which is the projection of B onto the column space of A. Now that I feel as though I've sufficiently repeated myself about 10 times there, let's go ahead and state a theorem that really encapsulates everything we've just talked about. A vector x hat is a least square solution of ax equals b. In other words, it's a near enough solution. It's the closest solution that we can get so that a times that vector x hat will possibly be close to b if and only if a times that x hat is actually the projection of b onto the column space of a. Again, I've already said it, so I'm not gonna go through and do another justification here. I've just shown it and said it enough. I think we can just hop into an example as is. So consider the equation ax equals b, where a is this matrix right here, and b is the vector two, two, negative one. Well, let's start by showing that B is definitely not in the column space of A. If B were in the column space of A, then there'd be a solution to AX equals B. So let's go ahead and show that the equation AX equals B must be inconsistent. And right now, pretty much the best way to do that is just to set up an augmented matrix and try to solve it. And because we have a pivot in our augmentation column here, we know from our work way, way back long, far long ago at the beginning of linear algebra that there's no solution to that system. So therefore that system is inconsistent. So we have shown that B is not in the column space of A. In fact, let me go ahead and write down the result. Again, we have shown that AX equals B is inconsistent. Therefore B is not in the column space of A. All right, let's see what else we have to do. Well, find a point in the column space of A that's closest to B. And when you're talking about matrices and vectors and finding points closest to other points, you're really trying to visualize something like this. We want a point in our column space of A that's closest to the tip of the vector B there, or basically closest to the vector B there. And that point is going to be the projection of B onto the column space of A. So let's go ahead and find that projection. And remember what I said at the beginning of the video, you should have already worked through orthogonal projections and the Gram-Schmidt process and all that fun stuff, but this is still a great reminder. What we wanna do is create a linear combination of the column vectors of the matrix A. Now what's gonna be very important for us here is a theorem we learned previously called the orthogonal decomposition theorem. And this theorem only works if your vectors for your basis, or in other words, the basis for your column space, or in other words, the column vectors of your matrix A are orthogonal. So suppose that W is a subspace of a vector space V, Further, suppose that W has an orthogonal basis S and that Y is in that larger space, possibly V. Then the projection of Y 
onto the subspace, in our case, we're looking at the projection of B onto the column space of A, it's going to be a linear combination of the columns of A of this form, as long as those columns of A are orthogonal to each other. And luckily in our case here, if you were to take the dot product of the two columns within A, you would get negative two plus two plus zero. And that dot product is zero. So these two column vectors are definitely orthogonal. If they were not orthogonal, you could use the Gram-Schmidt process to orthogonalize them. Luckily, we don't have to do that here. Normally, it's not much of an issue to do it if we have to. So finding the point in the column space of A closest to B is really going to boil down to finding the orthogonal projection of B onto the subspace spanned by the vector or the column vector of A, which I'm calling A sub 1, and then adding that to the orthogonal projection of the vector B onto the subspace spanned by the second column of A. Let's go ahead and figure out what these are. B dotted with A sub 1 is negative 2 plus 1, so that's a negative 1, minus 3. That's going to be a negative 4, and we're going to divide that by A sub 1, or the first column of A, dotted with itself. And this is not pretty, that's why I'm doing this in this example, rather than handing you something that's ugly for a homework or something like that. It's just to let you know that if you have the patience, you could totally do this. So a sub one dotted with itself would be one plus one fourth plus nine or 10 and one fourth or 41 fourths. We'll multiply that against the first column of a and then go ahead and find out what the next coefficient is. It's the vector B dotted with the second column of A. That's gonna be four plus eight plus zero, which is going to be 12. So let's go ahead and write that down. And then we need to divide that by the second column of A dotted with itself. And if you take a look at that here, it is going to be four plus 16 plus zero, or in other words, 20. And we're gonna multiply that by the vector A sub two, or the second column of A itself. Now we're going to clean this up a little bit and the mathematics is going to get a little ugly here. It's not the mathematics, it's the arithmetic that gets ugly. And please be careful with your arithmetic there. If you're doing a problem like this, uh, normally this you would use maybe um, a pre-programmed snippet of code, maybe that you've already written in MATLAB or something like that, or maybe Maple. Uh, which are, if you don't know what those are, they're usually, they're higher level coding languages that are used within mathematics and engineering, Mathematica included. But this is easy enough to do by hand. So that projection of B onto the column space of A, that's the closest vector to the vector B. And I should say that's the closest vector in the column space of A to the vector B. Again, the visual is right here. We're trying to find out what is this point right here, what's that vector right there, and we've just found it to be that really ugly vector that we computed. Finally, we're asked to state the solution to A x hat is equal to the projection of B onto the column space of A. That is asking us to solve this matrix equation right here. Now, I gotta be honest with you, you don't wanna really have to solve this by hand, but luckily, we already know the solution to this. Now, don't think that I'm gonna tell you, oh, this happened in a previous video, although it technically did, but it actually also happened in this video. Remember what this is asking. It's asking us to find the weights on the columns of A such that that linear combination will become this vector right here, whatever that ugly vector is. Notice in the work we just did, we have this weight right here, on the vector a sub one, which is the first column of a, plus this weight right here on the second column of a, and that became the projection of b onto the column space of a. So we actually know the solution to this equation already. And it's just a lesson in not overworking yourself, taking a moment to step back and ask yourself, do I really need to solve this? Do I already have a linear combination of those two column vectors that equals that projection vector right there? And the answer is totally yes. We actually found that linear combination or the weights of that linear combination when we found the projection of B onto the column space of A. 
Now we're gonna play with that idea a little bit more in future videos, but I think this is enough for the introductory video to the concept and definition of least squares problems. In the next video, we'll talk about solutions to least squares problems using what are called the normal equations. I hope to see you there. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that you remain a great human being. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way cause. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Too much that isn't kosher You may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry